Hi, welcome back for week three of Key Concepts in Technology. This week we'll be exploring some key design principles that are everywhere in complex systems, natural, social, and technical. Our key terms this week are modularity and modular design, the principle of hierarchical design by nesting layers of functions called abstraction layers. Now, these design principles make everything from cars to computers work as interconnected systems with hundreds of hidden components and functions. The hierarchical layer design, modular composition, and matching function with affordances for human capabilities have become universal principles for managing complexity in the design of technologies. All complex systems can be described in terms of their architecture that is, as a hierarchy of modules or subsystems that in turn have their own subsystems. In the scientific context, any complex system from an organism, an organization, to human artifacts like computer systems and networks are decomposable into modules or subsystems, each with a specific set of functions that make a system what it is by combination. We've got examples around us all the time of digital cameras, our cars, PCs, iPhones, the internet itself, a massively modular system. A modular system like a car, a computer, or a network has three main requirements or conditions for the system. An overall architecture that defines what modules are part of the system and their functions, interfaces that allow component modules to communicate their functions, to other modules in the system, and standards that can test a module's conformity to, to the design rules and interoperability within the system. In an internet-enabled computing device, inter interoperable components, the modules, perform necessary functions in a design architecture, the whole system. And these are mapped out in nested layers of functions that work as subsystems within the larger system. Like an iPhone, the iOS platform, and other mobile tablet platforms are extensively modular, including the application level, which is open for large-scale development by other parties that add value to the modular system. Modular design has proven to have many benefits and efficiencies, both in terms of cost of production and the network effects that attract more implementations of modules, like all the apps being developed for mobile devices. Mobile devices are great paradigms of modular design. The components are made by many manufacturers and designers, but they must interoperate according to design specifications for the modular system. Brian Arthur's model of combinatoriality reveals how modular component technologies become recombinable. In the right design, Separate functions that were once implemented in independent devices can become interconnected modules in a complex system, like everything that goes on in a commercial airline or the combined technologies in our computational devices. Not long ago, most of the functions in smartphones and wireless mobile devices were implemented in separate technologies and devices. 20 years ago, who would have predicted that we'd combine telephony, basic computing, personal messaging, photography, shopping and financial transactions, entertainment media and music and video, and GPS navigation with real-time mapping. All these functions used to be divided up in different kinds of implementations and devices by different equipment manufactured by separate industries, but are now implemented in component modules by combinatorial design and what I call the pan-digital platform. And in the case of the iPhone, all but the core processing chip, the system on a chip as it's called, are designed and made by other companies in a large complex ecosystem of component design, manufacturing, standards, and modularity. So modularity allows great efficiencies. No one company has the cost burden of developing and making everything. But a design company like Apple can orchestrate the whole combination, take advantage of implementations and developments that they didn't have to invest in, and select the best components available 
at the time of manufacturing a version of the device. Now the same is true for the software that drives all the components like the sound and audio chips, the HD video software, and the HD displays, none manufactured by Apple. But they're all modules in a very complex orchestrated combinatorial system. From this lesson, you should be able to describe the modular and combinatorial design of any technology you know and use the principles behind new combinations in any new technology that gets developed. So the next time someone you know says, hey, are you going to get that new and whatever it is, you know, the gadget, the device, the mobile phone, the smart TV, you can stop and think, well, does it bundle the functions in the modular design in an interesting value-added way? Are there additional combined functions that weren't there before? Are there improvements in the way pre-existing functions are implemented? Or is it just marketing, productizing, and hype? You may still want it, but at least you'll know the rules of the game.